Hello everyone, good evening. It's great to see you here again and welcome to another episode of a talk with the industry series brought to you by Sagi Group of Colleges. But uh, before we uh, introduce our speaker for tonight, let us introduce ourselves. Yeah, My name is Dexter. Hello everyone, my name is Phoebe and we will be your host for tonight. We have a very special guest with us here tonight that is Mr. Pyrus, who is the head of the youth segment marketing from Maybank. Yes, but uh, before we go any further, let us do a quick tech check. If you can see us and also hear us very clearly, then type yes in the comment section below. So that, we, we can you can see us. Uh, huh? yeah. uh, That's right. If you can, you can type ready or number one to show that you can see us or hear us clearly right now. Come on. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Can ah, Angie Ho. Ah, yes. Hello, Yaji hello. Um, hello, hello. Welcome. Jay Ito. Hi, hi, hi. Yes. So glad to have you here. Harris. Yeah. Harris. <laughs> RS. Alvina. Yeah. Wow. So many people. Yes, a lot of people. Okay. I can see that many people can hear us, uh, hear us and also see us. And I can see that so many people are excited to hear from Mr. Pyros tonight. Thank you all so much for the wonderful responses. And do feel free to continue interacting with us throughout tonight's session. And if you have any questions, you can just drop them down in the comment section and uh, Mr. Fibus will tackle these questions in the Q&A session, yeah? Yes. However, while we wait for more people to come in, we would like to acknowledge some of our industry partners who are watching right now with us tonight. They are Miss Mimi, Miss Anita, Miss Zuin from U-Mobile, and lastly, Mr. Albert from Illigia. Yes, thank you all for joining us tonight. We would also like to take this opportunity to say that this show is powered by Sure and also by Illigia. Actually, the microphone that we're using is actually from Shure. Huh? So if you all guys want to use this uh, nice microphone, you can just hop on to Shure. Okay, 
Before we begin, let us do a quick round down of today's talk. It will be divided into two parts. Firstly, Mr. Fyrus will be sharing about some of his financial tips for us. Then we will move on to our break, after which Mr. Firo will continue to share about what is termed uh, the cashless society. Lah. Then we will move on to our much anticipated lucky draw session and also the Q&A session. And I think everyone is already quite familiar with these with this rules of our lucky draw, but for the sake of clarity, let us explain it once again. Now, the winners, as always, will be selected randomly from a spinning wheel of those names who have registered for tonight's session. But registration will close during break time, unfortunately. So do register quickly and don't forget to tag three friends to, in order to stand a chance as is a, a condition for your prize. Lah, okay? So uh, the winner is also required to type I am the winner to validate themselves when their name is selected. Yes, make sure you type I am the winner to walk away with the prize. But before we bring our star for tonight, let's start. Have you heard of MAE or Maybank's e-wallet? Yeah, actually this May app uh, is very popular. Uh. I've been using it since about one, one, two years ago. It's very mm. easy to use, it's very simple. I see, I see. But I think maybe let Mr. Fire will share us something very special about MAE. You're app. right. I've heard of it before, but I never tried it. How about the audience? Have you guys heard of it or maybe use it? Please do share your experience with us. Yes, you can uh, tell us maybe your friend got used before yeah. or maybe you use it on a daily basis. Or your parents. Uh, auntie, uncle, akom, yeah. amma used before. <laughs> yeah. Anything like how uh, share with us like. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. MAE. Yes, share with us your experience. Yes. MAE, yes. Francis, MAE use it for my online transaction payment yeah, right. every single time. So Precious. convenient. Uh, Raman is using a saying it's very convenient also. And who else, who else, who else? Let's see. MAE app, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Uh, Edward is also using the MAE app. Yes. Yeah, Revolution. Mm. Okay. I can see that a lot of you are using MAE. And even tonight, people are, you know, out to use MAE instead of bringing cash out. Okay. Now let's not delay this any further. It's time for our star, Mr. Fires, to come up and share with us about his infinite wisdom. Are you all ready? If you are, type ready in the comment section right now. Okay, if everyone is ready, then let's put our hands virtually together for Mr. Fyros is one. Yes, hello. Hi. Hi, Good hello. Hi. hello. How are you tonight? Your day. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, just uh, gotten back from work. Uh, we got my mm -hmm. dinner, so I'm quite excited to do this. Yeah, we're excited to uh, hear a little bit more from you. Also, M A E. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Pyrus, I see that you will start tonight with sharing with us about some of your personal finance tips, right? So, we would right. like to know uh, what is your personal approach when it comes to managing your finances, and do you have any specific mm -hmm. methods that you can share with us? Right. Um, so there are a couple of um, specific um, personal finance tips that I actually implemented in my life, uh, especially when I first started um, uh, working as a, as a fresh graduate. So one of the first things that I actually started when I was a, a fresh graduate was something as simple as um, tracking your expenses. So that's one of the first things that I, I actually implemented in my life in order for me to to get to know the transition um, basically from, from a student um, to a corporate life. Because before that, I, I, I wasn't earning any income. And then I started earning an income and then I don't know where my money goes. So expense tracking yeah, is one of the, yeah, expense tracking is one of the big ticket items at that point of time. Um, and I realized when I, uh, when I started working, there are a lot of habits that I suddenly developed when I started earning my salary. For example, when I was still a student, I was not a coffee uh, or I was not a coffee drinker. Uh, suddenly, when I started working, I drank like uh, four cups of coffee every morning, <laughs> and then mm -hmm. uh, I only yeah, and then I only realized mm -hmm. that uh, um, once I started to consolidate my expenses um, by monthly, then I really I realized that hey, I actually drank a lot of coffee every morning. So that's why I started to optimize my uh, you know my expenses. So that, that's one of the few. Uh, tips that I, I actually have for everyone and one of the few experiences that I had. Um, aside from that, uh, one of the big um, uh, tips that I have as well 
is basically you actually need to tell your money where to go. So that's another really, really important item because not everyone actually tell their money where to go. Uh, so basically telling your money where to go is basically like having a plan. Like, you know, early of the month, you get your money and then you started, you know, telling them where to go. Lah. Like, for example, 200 ringgit. I need you to go to uh, the transportation this month. Okay. 100 ringgit. I need you to go to my parents uh, every month. So, you know, early of the month, you need to make a plan. So this plan is is what most people would call a budget, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to tell your money where to go so that don't, your money don't tell you where to go. So that's the tricky part. Not a lot of people actually implemented this in their life. And then, you know, moving on years later, they realize that this is actually a very important um, tools, equip, uh, important tips for them to actually enhance their, their personal finance capacity. So that's when I realized that for myself as well, I realized that having a plan actually does really matter, um, you know, so that you, you you could save better, you could you could have, you know, you could buy that car if you wanted to. Having a plan, telling your money where to go is a very, very important uh, tips that I have. So that's, I, I would say, the, the go-to tips. I would, if I were to, to choose one, that would be the go-to tips, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. I see, I see. Yes, you know, Planning, especially when it comes to our finances, is very important so that you know we don't spend our money simply. But a big issue with managing our finances is that it can sometimes be tough and frustrating to do. But like all things mm -hmm. in life, Mr. Virus, you know, you can effortlessly virtually correct them or you know track your finance digitally. Do you do that? Mm -hmm. Or how do you digitally track? your finances, transaction, expenses, right. all those, yeah. So that's uh, quite an, an interesting question. So based from my experience, so I graduated a um, couple of years back. I graduated in, in back in 2016, and mm -hmm. I was an engineering student going into banking. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from an engineering perspective, going into banking at that point of time, I don't have a lot of experience uh, with finances, either with the banking world or either with personal finance. Because university, at that point of time, my university did not teach me how to handle money well. So I, I, I had to explore <laughs> things. <laughs> so just like I was, yeah, so just like I was mentioning just now, I had to explore expense tracking. Then only then I realized that, you know, there are things that I could optimize. Suddenly I love coffee and suddenly I spent too much on coffee and I started cutting down coffee <laughs> for the next couple of months. So it was it was quite a, quite a journey uh, in terms of financial that I had there. So... Uh, one of the few things that uh, that I did back in the days was that once I graduated, like I was saying, I did expense tracking. I started telling my money where to go. But uh, at the same time as well, I was looking at how can I organize this properly, right? Back in the days, one of the things that I actually did was that I, I used Excel. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I used Excel. I put it on the phone. I had to create a template. So I had to like manually put my money in, right? Yeah, so you're using you using know? Excel on your phone, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was <laughs> <laughs> awesome though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you imagine like I go to buy the curry pub uh, besides the, the, the road and I was like, oh, curry pub, one ringgit 30 cent. I had to put in the Excel, one ringgit 30 <laughs> cent, <laughs> no receipt. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was it was it was such a crazy thing um using excel at that point of time mm. but then i started to to find you know more ways on how to 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 digitalize my finances and how to track my expenses better at that point of time uh, at that point of time as well i was using excel as my um budgeting method as well so i put like okay this money i have to go there this money i have to go there um, but then a uh, couple of, I think one year later, uh, once I started using the Excel, I, I found out an app. Uh, at that point of time, the app was known as Money Lover. It was quite a famous app in Malaysia as well at the point of time. Uh, but that app is something that you have to pay if you wanted to, to have additional feature. Um, it is something really cool as well at that point of time uh, because with the help of the app, uh, with the help of the app, they can um, they, they give me like monthly report, monthly chart. So like where do I spend the most? And then they have the yearly chart, which is quite nice. And then uh, last year, like last year when I decided to think cheat, you know, to, to, to take it up a notch a bit because it's such a hassle, right? Because every time when we talk about expense tracking, you have to jot things down. You have to, either it's an app or it's an Excel. Excel is even worse because you have to well, manually yeah, jot yeah, down everything. Right. <laughs> yeah. But then even though you have the app, the app helped you optimize everything, but you still have the, the hassleness that you have to key in everything one by one. So it's still a hassle. So 
last year is something that uh, what I did last year was that I, I digitally tracked them using the May app. So that's something new because I was working in Maybank. Um, when the app was launched, I was like very excited. I wanted to try this out because I heard they have this expense tracking feature. So if you have, if you're a customer of Maybank, uh, if you have Maybank credit card, Maybank debit card, you don't, you don't have to track your expenses anymore. They actually help you track for you. And then they actually put it in a monthly expense tracking sheet. So you can see like this month, where do you actually spend the most? So that's, uh, something that I did. I, I shift everything to Maybank last year because I wanted to see. Uh, you know, how does my expense tracking look like as a, as a Maybank customer? And then I realized as well the app, right? So the good thing about the app was that they allow me to, to manually track as well if, if needed. For example, um, I think the, the team that, that does behind the, the whole expense tracking thing was quite creative. They understand sometimes people actually take out their money at the ATM. So when the people take out the money at the ATM, you can't track via the app. Uh, so they actually allow a manual input. So that's something quite nice. I'm still using the, the app and I find, you know, everything is quite nice because I'm a wholesome Maybank customer, credit card, debit card, all with, hmm. with, me, uh, with the Me app. So that's how I actually track nowadays. I don't no longer using Excel. So that's something I'm really, really proud of. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, using Excel is, I think you, the the makcik at the park, the curry pub store, I think they're very confused. Like, Apa, like the boy, uncle, auntie. Macam wants to uh, prepare the auntie. This boy. So, um, Mr. Fairuz, I see you're quite a fan of the main app as well. I've been using it hmm. for about two years. I can see actually it's a lot of uh, functions, uh, not just a tracking and allow you to do the cashless transaction also, right? But we like mm -hmm. to know actually what's your favorite uh, feature of this app la? What's so cool about right. it? Right. Mm. So uh, there are a lot of cool things that I like about the app. Honestly speaking, so when it first rolled out, um, that's the thing about the Mi app, right? When it first rolled out, they, they they try to talk a lot about the features, but still there are a lot of hidden features that not many people talk about the app. For example, right? Of course, one of the features that I like the most about the app is, is the expense tracking part because it automatically consolidates all of your um you know banking expenses into one like debit card credit card e-wallet combined into one so that's mm -hmm. the best feature about it um but there are also other features that i enjoy that not many people actually knows about for example did you know that uh if you're an if, if you are an iphone user you can actually store your loyalty card inside one of the app in in in, in your mm -hmm. uh in, yeah in, by the apple store right so you just download the app you can you can store your loyalty card but nowadays hmm. you don't actually have to do that. The Mi app itself have a loyalty card function embedded inside the app. So if, for example, for example, oh. if you have bonus link, if you have, for example, Tesco card, or oh, no longer Tesco nowadays, it's called Lotus, right? So you yeah. can just, yeah, you can just embed it inside the app. So there's not many people actually use this function and talk about it. I, I, hmm. I thought that it's, it's quite a hidden function that not many people actually saw. So that's uh, one part that, um, that actually uh, a lot of people miss, uh, the loyalty card function. Then the other part that I really enjoyed about the app is how the app actually helped me to become a, a financially savvy person, financially better person. Let me, let me, let me, let me tell you why. Um, so I just gotten married last year. Um, oh, oh congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> Baby, you're doing <laughs> <laughs> so, I, yeah, so I got to marry during the MCO, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, which I don't get to spend a lot on weddings. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when I got to marry last year, um, I realized that uh, now I have a responsibility towards another individual. And that responsibility mm -hmm. would be uh, many things. For example, um, once a year, I have to celebrate her birthday. I have to celebrate the anniversary together. I have to celebrate her parents' birthday as well. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I have to admit, uh, one of my biggest weakness is I can't remember things very well. I have to admit that my memory isn't as good. Probably the ladies, uh, the memories is a bit better. My wife's memory is a lot better than mine. So <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember things that well. So uh, <laughs> that's why I realized that the app actually helped me a lot. Um, for example, when, when it comes to birthday, when it comes to uh, anniversary, I actually use one of the app's um, best feature known as Tabung, whereby mm -hmm. what the app actually did, um, you can actually ask, you can actually set the app to deduct a certain amount of money every month out of your e-wallet uh, into a virtual Tabung. 
So it's not a physical mm. tabung, but a virtual tabung. Whereby that tabung every month they will deduct, they will deduct a certain amount of money that you already decided from your account to this tabung, and they will actually um, they would actually do it without you noticing, right? So that's something mm. nice. And the best thing is you can set. Uh, a maturity date on the tabung. For example, you can set the, the date of the tabung. For example, when I did it, I, I set the tabung to be my wife's birthday tabung. So I set the mm. date one week before my wife's birthday. So my wife's birthday is coming up uh, this, mm. uh, this November. And then I'm quite excited to see the progress of the tabung is almost completed. Whereby one week before my wife's um, birthday it will actually give me a notification hey your tabung is full uh you can, you, then i can use the money to buy her a birthday present so this is something that i really like about the app so i can just set a reminder for my wife's birthday for the anniversary i can't remember my date anniversary i just have to check the app <laughs> then um you know all my my parents birthday um some people actually use them not just um to remember this you know the birthday anniversary some people actually use them for example um, to pay off your car insurance. You have to pay all your car insurance yearly, right? So yeah. you just deduct it monthly and then you can use it by the next, uh, you know, uh, by the time it mature, you can use it to pay your car insurance or maybe your road tax, whatever that is needed. So they help you optimize and, you know, take out your money and then help you save, which is honestly, that's another... That's very convenient. Yeah, yeah. correct. Everything yeah, in, one place, like in one place. Yeah, so I, I'm not sure whether you guys have, you guys tried the, the Tabung feature. I think... If you guys do so, please do so for your, um, I don't know, boyfriend or girlfriend or your husband and ask them <laughs> for you guys, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But so, to be honest, it's really convenient. It helps you to keep money virtually, you know? The yeah. Tabung yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it helps you keep money virtually. It's not just it's not just doing that, you know. Um, there is uh, several function that would help you to, to save better. For example, they have this booster function. For example, mm -hmm. this booster function. How does it function? Is that you can set a limit on your ex, uh, on your spending. For if if you if you go above the limit of your spending that you already set, they will actually penalize you. They will take your money and put it inside the tabung so to to accelerate your savings. Mm -hmm. So you can set that booster as well, which is something really really cool. And yeah, uh, okay, okay. yeah uh, aside from that, uh, if you guys uh, have uh, the e wallet. And then you guys have the May card, uh, the the yellow color card, the May card, right? You can actually set the May card. Um, what you can do is that every time, if you have a tabung, you can set one of the booster as one of the booster for the tabung. Every time you use the May card, and every time you have a remaining from the spending from your May card, you can actually include it to your tabung as well. For example, mm. right? If you use your May card, you go to Starbucks. Starbucks price is uh, ten ringgit seventy cent. It will deduct 11 ringgit from your account, uh, from your May card. 10 ringgit 70 cents they charge to, they, they pay to Starbucks. 30 cents they will take out and put it inside your tabung. So that's another way that they help you to, you know, accelerate your savings. And something really, really cool as well. And the last booster function that I enjoyed as well is actually, um, you understand that sometimes Maybank have a lot of promotions going around, like 10 ringgit cashback mm, here. Yeah, a lot, a lot. Cashback, a lot. There's sometimes you have the games, right, where you can play, you can win two bucks, one yeah, buck, yeah, okay, okay. which by I never won the game, by the way. Every time I play, I never want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to play it after this. <laughs> you, you, yeah. you know, my, my wife gotten two bucks, but I've never gotten any single cent. So... So uh, maybe this, you need this, to play more. Yeah, maybe I need to play more. <laughs> so if if you get this cashback, right? Either the the, the cashback or the games uh, extra money. Uh, if you turn on the booster function inside your tabung, they can actually collect or gather all your tabung's uh, cashback into your you know all your cashback into this tabung as well to accelerate your savings as well. So mm -hmm. it really is quite a good feature that I think Tabung is a really, really beneficial feature for, you know, to improve your financial capability. Mm, yeah, that's true, that's true. Well, uh, that was actually really insightful. I see Nicholas Chu, they're doing a lot of savings Same. or so. Yeah. Uh, it was so fast, I can't see. It's okay. But it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Mr. Pyrus, I'm, I'm sure after today, our viewers will definitely have uh, less hassle in managing their day-to-day -day expenses. It will be, be, mm. become as easy as ABC for them. And uh, thank you so much for sharing on your personal tips. So, we finally reached our halftime break. And when we return, Mr. Farius will share with us about something very interesting called Cashless Society. I'm very intrigued myself as well. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Then, after the half-time break, uh, Mr. Fai, uh, we will move on to the Q&A session and also the Lucky Draw session. So, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to register yourself before our break ends and also tag three friends. With that, we'll catch you back in a bit. See you. See you. Mr. Virus, with us here tonight to share some finance tip and also the term cashless society, which is we can see in front of us right now. Yes, so Mr. Virus, I noticed that nowadays, right, our society is slowly changing. And not mm. too long ago, it's quite hard to imagine actually not having cash on ourselves when we go about our daily activities, right? And right. as what a certain uh, Malaysian has said before, cash is king. Or sometimes we Chinese people like to say, uh, no money, no talk, you go home, like you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, nowadays, this is just not true anymore. And we are slowly moving towards something called a cashless society. And uh, basically, everyone nowadays is using a e-wallet or maybe the payway for the cashless transaction. And uh, mm. I'd just like to ask, uh, why do you think this is so? Right. So the, um, there's a lot of reason why um, uh, the government is actually trying to put a direction to us to go to uh, a cashless society. It's not just the government. It, even globally, you can see that um, you know, other countries are moving towards cashless society as well. Uh, if you've been to UK, almost everywhere is cashless. Only the, the travelers are the one with you know cash, with paper yeah, money. Okay. Rest is just cashless. Right. So when we talk about cashless, uh, the definition of cashless uh, in Malaysia um, is, is quite broad because there are numerous ways in Malaysia currently that um, you can be cashless. Uh, when we talk about cashless, you can either use your credit card, uh, it's still counted as cashless. You can use your debit card, still counted as cashless. You can use your QRP. Uh, there's a lot and numerous amount of e-wallet. You can use your QRP right now. Um, there's a number of ways for you to become cashless nowadays. And when we talk about, now that, that when I mentioned just now QRP, uh, nowadays Malaysia have this um, national QR, national QR, whereby if you notice it at the shop, you don't need a lot of QR code anymore. You just need one QR code, which mm. is the pink color QR code. And then it doesn't matter, you know, from which app you guys are scanning it from, you guys can use that national QR code. And now they are trying to link that national QR code to other ASEAN countries as well, so that when you travel, uh, you don't have to go through the hassle of you know exchanging the money. You can just use the, yeah. the, the, the QR code within the ASEAN country, which is something really, really cool. But there's a lot of benefits when we talk about um, cashless society. 
So, uh, for example, right, one of the projects that I'm working on is um, trying to build a, a cashless society within the schools and within the universities. Um, so within the universities, for example, one of the big issue in the schools area, right, in the schools compound, uh, when we were, when we reach out to the schools, the schools actually told us, um, Maybank, there's actually a lot of bullying cases in the school. And mm -hmm. usually these bullying cases, the root cause is getting back to money. Right, so because mm -hmm. the, the people are being bullied, the money are being taken from. It sounded like a lot of um, you know drama, K-pop drama, where you're being bullied. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, it, for money. <laughs> but uh. it actually it, it actually happened in real life. So when when okay. one of the school that we went in, they, they told us this issue is happening. So they asked us how can we help curb this situation from happening, and that's when we told them, you know what? Why not? The, the easiest way is why not you embrace the future and and you know come in and become a um, convert your, your your school to become cashless if you converting your school to become cashless you you don't get you, you know uh, you don't get uh, to to bully people and then just take their money because cash is no longer on hand everything is on the phone mm -hmm. and even if the person is trying for example to take your money from you by scanning your QR or anything um, your parents can still see your account and they can just see, hey, why is this person taking the money from you? So mm -hmm. they can easily be reported, can easily, you know, you can bring this Check up to the school. So, yeah, so there is yeah. evidence there. So because cash, there's no evidence if that person is taking the money from you, right? Yeah, so, correct, correct. Yeah, so this is some ways that we at the bank trying to build not just a cashless society, but at the same time, a better society, right? So that's mm -hmm. some of the ways that we're trying to do. So. In, in Malaysia, there are, like I was saying, there are numerous ways uh, for you to become cashless. And you can see that the government is trying to push uh, Malaysia to become cashless. They're trying to push, um, especially the youth, to become cashless, to be accustomed to cashless. And the youth nowadays are quite smart as well. So when, when, whenever we talk about cashless, it's not just cashless in terms of your spending, right? It's not just cashless, for example, I want to use my debit card, I want to use my QR, no, your your investment nowadays are pretty much cashless. You don't even have to go to the counter, to the bank counter to invest. Um, I'm not sure whether you guys know this. People like my parents are still going to the bank to invest. Like they go to the bank <laughs> counter. Uh, yeah, I got a thousand ringgit. I put it on the counter. I wanted to invest. <laughs> right. So, but then you don't have to do that nowadays. You can just transfer everything. You can just you know online. You don't even have to go to the bank's counter anymore. So what matters is there are ways that that if you don't realize that nowadays that you have to go if you thought right now that you have to do, go to the bank and settle by cash there are ways that you can just do a bit of google search there are ways that you could actually do this you know cashlessly without without going to the bank and mm -hmm. right now even working uh, in maybank right now we are working in numerous amount of project that are pushing people to be cashless. We are putting out numerous amount of campaigns. Uh, that's the reason why you can see that um, the last couple of years, uh, Maybank, um, CIMB, Public Bank, Touch and Go, Grab, they are putting out a lot of campaigns for, pe for people. Um, it's actually to push people to be accustomed um, toward, towards becoming part of the cashless society. Like right now, I can go to Grab. I can see that there's hundreds of deals on Grab that allows mm. me to you know, to, to, to do a delivery, uh, to pick up a food there. And the best thing is they actually promoted um, this cashless environment. They don't actually ask you to, to COD anymore. All right, so that's... Yeah, correct. Yeah. Correct, correct. yeah. Even buying yeah. groceries, like, buying your food, like, everything mm. nowadays, it doesn't only even money anymore. Huh? It's at right. the tip of your finger. Mm. Right. But that, that's been... Uh, there's, a, there's a cons to this as well. Like, um, so whenever we talk about cashless society, uh, the good thing is um, you don't have to be in contact with anyone and then you don't have to bring cash. But there are cons to this as well. Um, for example, uh, some people, uh, for example, I have some friends, some friends of, some friends of mine that, that, that uh, they're really in need to touch something. Like they can't do transaction um, on the phone. They just need the cash. There are mm. some people like that. Whether you like it or not, in this society, there will be people like that. For example, the older generations, the very old soul kind of person, there are people that like to hold cash. Um, and what I did with my friend, those that like to hold cash, I told them, you know what? You can use cash if you prefer to. But I would suggest any big transaction for you to learn at least to transact um, online, to transact using the internet. Don't try, you know, don't bring 1,000 ringgit in your pocket anymore. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, correct, correct, correct. <laughs> it's dangerous. Right. 
Yeah, it's, it's yeah. very dangerous. So that's said about being um, cashless. My suggestion is for the youth, uh, for those watching this channel, uh, if, if right now, if, if you are transacting using um, cash, just find ways for you to, to enable yourself cashless. Maybank, there are a numerous amount of features that will enable you to become cashless. Uh, don't bring uh, cash anywhere anymore. I, I barely bring any any cash in my wallet. It's like 100 ringgit as a reserve. That's it. I don't, that reserve hasn't, haven't been touched like three months. <laughs> yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think uh, that's really cool, actually. I think after today, Mr. Fires, I want to follow you also. Uh, I think my wallet, uh, just leave it at home, uh, just use my phone, or maybe at the boss, uh, one may bank card uh, enough already. Uh, huh? Don't have to spend on buying the, wallet. Yeah, that's why. Right, right. You're just using the May app. But uh, before we move on to the last segment for tonight, uh, do you have any uh, additional advice for youth who want to start managing their finances but they don't know how? Or maybe can you add a little bit more about uh, what you've been talking about, the cashless society? Mm. Mm. My Okay, my final advice um, for the youth out there, this is a pretty simple advice. Uh, uh, now, the, the, this advice that I'm having is, uh, just like I was saying earlier, um, when you start earning, when you start receiving a stable income, even right now, the thing that you need to have is a plan. Uh, a plan for your money and a plan for your life. That's a very, very important um, plan that you need to have. Uh, a plan for your life means that you need to have a plan. What do you want to do in your life? Either your, 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 your bucket list, your life goals, whatever it is that you wanted to achieve in life. This is because most people do not have a purpose in life. They live their life automatically. And when they are living their life automatically with no purpose, it means that they don't have any financial planning to back up any of their purpose, right? What you need right now is sit down, list down your life goals, list, list down your purpose, and list down the financial plan for you to achieve it. That financial, once you have your purpose, once you have your financial plan to achieve your purpose, and then you will realize that you suddenly have a plan for your for your for your money for your you know for your financial monthly suddenly you have even daily plans for your money you don't even realize that you are doing this for the sake of achieving that one or maybe that that several life goals that you're having yeah it could be your life goal could be anything it could be i wanted to get married if you wanted to get married then what's the amount of money that you actually need to to, to collect, to save, to invest. Yeah. And from that amount of money that you need to save, collect and invest, what's your monthly plan in order for you to do it? What's your budget like? And then you have to realize that it's not just enough to have a budget. You also realize that you have to complement it with expense tracking. And with all, with, with all these plans that you're having with expense tracking, you also need the app. That's when the bank actually um, is there to help you, to assist you in your plan. So that's how you can become better financially. Right, so that's my advice. It started from your life goals, and then you have to, you know, plan it out, go it down slowly, and then decide your monthly plan, your budget, and then you realize that you can actually uh, plan out your daily spending as well. So that's my advice. At the same time, all this plan, uh, it could all direct you to become cashless as well. If you wanted to become cashless, it's pretty simple. All right, number one, right now, number one, right now, the pretty simple thing that you have to do is that download the Me app. Right, you download the Me yeah, app. Yeah, uh, Right, yeah, just download the Me app. Sign up for the e wallet today. Even if you don't have a, a, a banking account, you don't have a Maybank bank account right now. You can just use the app, no problem. Ooh. Download the app. Mm. Register mm. For the e -wallet. Yeah, yeah. You don't even have to have a banking account with Maybank to use the app, mm. as long as you register for the e wallet. Uh, but you have to bear in mind if you register for the e wallet, the initial capacity is five thousand ringgit. Like uh, if you're earning 5,000 ringgit right now, it's maxed out <laughs> once you put in 5,000 ringgit. But you can increase the limit to 10,000 ringgit uh, if you apply mm. for the main card. And then it will increase to 10,000 ringgit. Um, mm. But you have to bear in mind as well, um, in Malaysia, uh, e-wallet is governed by Bank Negara Malaysia. So all of the e-wallet in Malaysia right now, they have a specific limit. So it's not unlimited like a banking account. If you wanted mm -hmm. something unlimited, you have to register a banking account with the bank. All right. Yeah, and uh, actually, Mr. Fairo, since we are on the point of downloading the May app, right? If mm. I'm not mistaken, we have a special treat from May Bank to all the viewers today. So, uh, right. ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, Mr. Fairo has a very special treat for everyone here tonight. If you download the May app, he will give you one angpao. And that angpao <laughs> actually is in the form of 10 ringgit. Yes. Uh, so, if you download the May app tonight, immediately after this, now, 
uh, whenever, as long as within today, then you get a special do it raya, ang pao, or maybe the do it dipavali, 10 ringgit. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, you have a very big reason to get download the MAE app, right? So, let's do it. So, Phoebe? So, thank you, Mr. Farius, for the advice that you gave just now. It really makes sense, especially for us students. We have to plan from young and subsequent until, you know, maybe we get married in the future. So, members of the audience, if you have any questions for Mr. Pyrus, do leave them in the comment section below and we will take as many questions as possible as our schedule allows us to do. Without further ado now, let's jump right into our Q&A and Lucky Draw section. And our Lucky Draw prize for tonight is 3 units of May credit worth 40 ringgit. So if you are one of the lucky winners, you get 40 ringgit ang pao again, huh? in addition hmm. to the 10 ringgit. So again, we would like to remind that you have 50 now. Yeah, 50 ringgit just from watching this are so yes. easy. So again, we would like to remind that the winner must validate themselves by typing I am the winner. But when their name is selected by the spinning wheel. If not, then the prize will go on to the next participant. Huh? Then your prize. Bye-bye. Right. right. Also, uh, you will need to take three friends or else your prize will be forfeited also. Yes, but before we get into that, we would like to inform you on our next session with Eligia, where Mr. Nicholas Chu will be sharing about the game changer. As usual, next week, next Wednesday, 20th of October, 8 p.m. Yeah, so you've always been hearing that our show is powered by Eligia. Yes. Finally, you are able to hear from Eligia themselves. Yes. So we hope to see you all there. Now, let's bring out the wheel and spin that wheel and find out who our first lucky winner will be. Don't forget to type I'm the winner if you don't want to say bye bye to your prize. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> her. <laughs> Yay, it's actually me. Yes. Yes. So the PD Sangan Sia here is actually uh, PD. <laughs> so you're getting a 40 ringgit ang pao tonight, PD. Thank you, Mr. Pyrus. Uh, maybe you'll belong to me after this. Can, 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 <laughs> okay, so congratulations. Since PD is here, she just say, I, I'm I am the winner. Yeah, so, <laughs> so before, okay, before we move on to our second winner, let, let's see. Our uh, first question is from who? Huh? Mm -hmm. So, KG Ng is asking, amazing sharing. Uh, she's actually a Maybank to you user, so she's asking, uh, What is the difference between Maybank to you and also the May app? Right. Uh, so very interesting question. A lot of people are confused about this, right? There, there are several confusion when it comes to, to Maybank's um, product and, and, and services. Uh, number one, people are confused. What's the difference between Maybank to you app and the May app? And people are also confused. What's the what is the May app? Is May app is the e-wallet or is it the app? Is me is the app or is the e-wallet, right? Mm -hmm. So again, yeah. I'll, I'll address both at the same time since a lot of people would ask the same question anyway. <laughs> right. Um, so number one, the difference between Maybank to you and the Bay app. So in Maybank, we are one of the best digital bank in Malaysia. And with that responsibility and honor given to us, uh, we actually have like a standard, um, I would say, um, refreshing of our app every five years. So every five years, we, we would refresh our our website, our app, you know, to make it more up to date, to make it more uh, trendy to the current uh, users, right? So when it when it comes to Maybank to you and the May app, so Maybank to you is an app uh, which just have your banking feature. It's only it, it only have your banking feature, right? That's it. It has your saving account, your credit card, your your loans, whatever it is. Only that. It doesn't go beyond than that. All right. However, the new one is the May app. So the May app consists of all the banking feature that the Maybank to you app have and more. When I say more, it is actually equipped to actually assist your lifestyle. For example, like I was saying, expense tracking, uh, we have the loyalty card. that you mentioned just now. Ah, yeah, so all ah, of that is included good, good. in. Uh, so the Maybank to you app don't have that, right? So mm -hmm. if you want to upgrade your lifestyle, you should download the May app. However, I would say this, um, right now, a lot of users are going to the May app. Um, Maybank to you app is an old app, all right? It's an old app. We are still currently using it. Uh, we are not sure uh, when is the, 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 I would say, the life or, or the duration of the life that the Maybank to you app may have, but May app is uh, the future app, all right? So that's uh, to, to address your first the, the, the first confusion. The second one is, um, 
when Maybank launched our May E wallet, it, uh, they actually launched our May E wallet the, with the intention to give a sneak peek towards the new app. So once the new app is out, we we is known as the May app, and then the May app is included with the E wallet feature, which is known as May as well. So that's that's it. So I, I hope everyone understand it. So it's a May app included. The May app is also included with the E wallet. All right. Mm -mm. Okay, that's a very good explanation of to distinguish between Maybank to you and May app. Mm. All right. Since we have our first winner over here, now let's move <laughs> on to our second <laughs> second lucky draw winner. Now spin the wheel. Yes. Let's see. Let's see who will be the next winner. Christine Kong, Christine Kong. Congratulations, Christine. You are now 40 ringgit richer. Yes, remember early, to type I am the today. winner. Remember to type I yes. am the winner. Now, we have a question from Francis Lim. He, he asks, this is a good app for my pending financial. Any friends to friend referral rewards to installing <laughs> the main app? Uh, what do you think about this, Mr. Mr. Paris? All oh, right. Uh, it's a very interesting question. So yes. currently, currently we don't have that yet. Um, when the app was launched initially, we actually have the the me app referral campaign whereby you have to refer to your friends and then you get, um, you get some. You don't get money. You actually get some life. Uh, for the game and then you for the from the game you actually play. It, then you can win like fifty ring, fifty cent, one ringgit, two ringgit. Um. For example, I remember uh, uh, when the app was launching, I had an event. Uh, I can't remember in one of the uh, government university where I, I I I was a speaker. Then I asked them, you know what, use my referral code. And then the next day, I realized I have four hundred lives. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> I can play the game infinitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that uh, yeah. So that was initially, but now we don't have any referral um, any referral campaign as of now. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Yeah, I just want to add up from that. If you register mm. for the May app today, then you have 10 ringgit free. Yes. Uh, so your special referral today is uh, registered today, like how your yep. May app. <laughs> <laughs> so I can see Christine is already saying I am the winner. So congrats, Christine. You are now 40 ringgit richer on your, on, your, on your May app. Yes. And if you download the May app, you'll have another extra 10 ringgit. That's mean you have 50 just by watching this. Yeah. So thank you, Mr. Pyrus, for answering that. Now our third and also last lucky draw winner for today. Let's, Let's see, see who will win it. Spin the wheel, spin. Mm. So Jack Lee Kai Kiat, congratulations, Jack. You are now Tokyo oh, Rangers Richer. To yes. claim your prize, please say I am the winner. You have one, one minute. minute. So let's see where our last question is for tonight. So Chris Lim is asking, hi, will Maybank collaborate with Segi such uh, as they did with uh, Malaysian Airlines and Segi yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's asking about like, if we are possible to have any MOU. Yes. Uh, All right. That's a, that's a very business corporate-like structure <laughs> question. Maybe Chris is a business student. Yeah, Chris is a business. <laughs> right. You have a very bright future in front of you. <laughs> Saying that, um, um, I think there are some opportunities that Maybank is exploring with Segi. Uh, if um, if everything is permitted, if everything goes well, uh, we might be having a, a potential collaboration together. But that is something that um, uh, I would say I, I am right right now myself. I'm not sure about it first, but we are trying our best to have uh, something with Segi as well. So it would it would be mm -hmm. great if we could have something uh, you know Maybank X Segi together. Yes. You know, so that our students can maybe work for you guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or graduated definitely. students, yeah. Definitely. Okay. We are quite excited as well to have Saggy students to come and working with us. I think we have maybe quite a few. Chris Lim should. <laughs> yeah, maybe yes. Chris Lim one will be your first applicant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time is up. We don't have our winner. Uh, we don't have our winner. Maybe we can spin it one final yes. time. Uh, if, mm. if this next winner not going to come up, we can do it uh, offline. Yep. Uh, huh? So we mm. won't waste uh, <laughs> any of our schedule tonight. Now let's see. Let's see, let's see. Let's wheel spinning, the wheel spinning. Let's see who will be the lucky winner. Walking with 40 ringgits, man. <laughs> Chris. Chris! I assume that this will be the same Chris thing is asking it? the question. <laughs> Come on. So um, Chris is the lucky winner of this 40 ringgit May credit. 
So while we are waiting for Chris to say I'm the winner, let's take one final question for tonight, shall we, Mr. Pyrus? Mm. Yes. Yep. Okay, so Raghu Raman is asking, uh, Mr. Firus, do you encourage youngsters to have current account as in a Maybank to you since we're upgrading to a May app? Right, okay. Uh, it's a very interesting question. So um, whatever that you currently have in Maybank to you or whatever options that you have in Maybank to you would be available in the May app as well. All right, uh, saying that, uh, the options uh, to have a current account is entirely up to you, but you need to understand the purpose of having another account. For example, uh, a lot of people ask me, Firuz, I have a savings account. It's already attached to my debit card. Why should I have an e-wallet? Right. For me, it all comes down to a purpose uh, for each of the account that you have. Right. For example, my savings account is designated as my um, only savings, something that I use to put in money. But my May account, my e-wallet account is something that I designate as my spending account. So whenever I wanted to spend for, you know, McDonald's, KFC, Domino's, um, you know, uh, whatever, uh, family mart, ke, uh, so I only use the e-wallet, right? But mm -hmm. when it comes to anything, for example, short-term short -term savings, I will put inside my savings account, right? And I also have another uh, account with the bank, uh, which is a joint account that I have with my wife, which is a current account. That I designate that account as a joint expenses account between me and my wife. For example, that account is the account that I use to pay for the house, the account that I use to pay for, uh, you know, for our groceries together. So expenses. Yeah, yeah, the expenses that we have together. So you need to understand before opening up another account, of course, uh, you know, if you go to the branch, uh, to Maybank right now, they will encourage you to open a, another account. But you need to understand what's the purpose of you opening this account. So before you open any account, you have to deep down, you know, dial down the first, what's your purpose? Why do you want to use this account as? And then, uh, of course, you can go for it. Of course, I would encourage you for you to open it, but you have to understand your purpose first. Don't just open, uh, you know, without understanding the purpose. Suddenly, you have to pay the annual fee and whatnot. <laughs> You're just going to lose your money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. So okay. I can see that Chris Lim is already saying I am the winner of so soon he is the person who yes. asked that question just now. You know, this is this is the <laughs> sign that Chris question for having Segi collaborate with Mebang, you know, we should fulfill that dream. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for answering, Mr. Pyrus. Congratulations to all the winners, including myself. You guys are very lucky. <laughs> you know, so before we end today's talk, I would like to once again invite all of you to watch our session next week with Illegal by Nick, Mr. Nicholas Chu, who will be sharing about the Game Changer, 20th of October, as usual, 8 p.m. Yes, and we hope to see you all by then. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, like all good things in life, they must come to an end, right? So we finally reached the end of our talk session and also Mr. Pyrus' uh, sharing mm. session. Lah, huh? So until we meet again next week, meanwhile, stay home, stay safe, and have a wonderful evening from all of us here at a uh, Segi group of colleges and also Maybank. See you and bye goodbye. Bye -bye. Thank you, Mr. Farrell. See yes, ya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> bye. bye, -bye.